everyone welcome back to another video it's christmas day i'm recording this on christmas day and i'm uploading this christmas day so merry christmas to everybody and i hope you have a fabulous new year i'm actually working so i'm working the night shifts worked last night didn't get until nearly 7 a.m and i'll be back out to work at 6 p.m so very very soon i have to get ready to go to work but i wanted to do this video a year in review in the fragrance community, in the fragrance world, and also in my own life. So maybe going to get a tiny bit personal as well, but I'm not going to go into full depth. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you a rundown of my entire year, including what I bought in the shops, what dinners I made and how much laundry I did. Don't worry, that's not going to happen. But I'm just going to keep it. It's mostly going to be fragrance related, but just a few personal bits as well. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with February and as you may know I was in a relationship with Dan from Mr Smelly. Unfortunately in February we broke up. I'm not going to go into details because it's not fair on Dan because he's not here to edit what I say but we'll just say it's completely amicable. It just didn't work out but we still have a fantastic friendship. We still do videos together and we still support each other. We see each other. He's actually buying a property near where I live. So we'll be doing more collaborations. So that is all okay. Before we split up, Dan and I went to Paris for a long weekend and my main aim was to buy a bottle of Le Plus Beau Jour de Ma Vie from Guerlain. So you can only get the B bottle of Le Plus Beau Jour de Ma Vie from a Galan boutique or in you can get them in Harrods from the concession in London but you can't just get that in any department store and I wanted the big bottles 125 mils they fill it up for you in the shop the staff were amazing and I absolutely love it I sold some of it off to justify and sort of subsidize the cost because it's quite a pricey fragrance i think it was 345 euros and i got it engraved with smurphy on the front they you can choose the ribbon and the cut the bottle color and the blue le plus beau jour de ma vie is a beautiful orange blossom with a sort of anacedic opening note that's sweet as well there's a sugared almond note in here it's supposed to represent a typical french wedding so all the beautiful confections that you might find at the french wedding plus the bouquet and this is absolutely beautiful it has a musky vanillic dry down that i love very very good performance it's an eau de parfum concentration and i added that to my collection because i really really wanted it and actually made the pilgrimage to paris to get it so it's all the more special for that next up uh, in the year was jeremy fragrance's release of the office office for men and this one i was interested to smell i have to admit i was interested but i also had my reservations because of the extremely high price and the fact that jeremy couldn't justify that price in his video he basically said it's that price because it's niche and because i can charge that price and it's alberto marias is the perfumer but Alberto Marias is a perfumer for many fragrances that are much, much cheaper. He has done fragrances for Zara and therefore that in itself didn't justify the price. So I was really, really curious about the fragrance. I wasn't expecting too much, but I kind of wanted to be, I wanted to be shocked and I wanted the fragrance to actually be good. So I actually did a video on why you shouldn't buy it based on not how it smelled because I hadn't smelt it at that point, but just based on the way that he'd marketed it, uh, the dullness of the name, uh, the kind of Ikea simplicity of wearing a fragrance to the office that's called the office just the lack of imagination with that and the mostly the price point so i did a video on why you shouldn't buy 
fragrance one office for men and that was actually i think my most viewed video of the year and i got a lot of hate i got a lot of support as well there were a lot of people that agree with a lot of my opinions or some of my opinions there were some some that disagreed in a very nice and well articulated way and there were some that chose to insult my teeth my weight my background my house they, they said i had um i had clearly not refurbished in a long time so there were some personal comments actually going back to teeth so at this point i hadn't started my teeth straightening journey and uh, it was absolutely not a trigger for that that was always going to happen but my teeth I used to have fangs here and uh, so yeah someone insulting my teeth was a little bit uh, unpleasant to hear because I was paranoid about them anyway since then I've worn an Invisalign and I straightened them out I'm still ongoing with my treatment on my teeth I'm going to get these two front ones they are going to they can uh, get built up a little bit so they look nice and even but going off on a little bit of a tangent there so basically i got i got quite a lot of hate so my most trolled video also my most watched video was why you shouldn't buy jeremy's office for one and then finally i got to smell it uh, much later down the line and yeah uh, I did review it alongside Alexandria's boardroom. So Alexandria have cloned Office One for Men and I reviewed both of them side by side. In my opinion, I'll just summarise what I found. I found both fragrances very annoying, lots of synthetic, very noticeable amounts of Isoe Super, synthetic woodsy notes. Both fragrances were very loud and i got an anti-compliment and i'm not joking i had one on each hand and when i walked into my work office i work with a lady who's actually got a chemical background and she's worked in a, a perfume factory where she was sort of creating new molecules so she's very experienced in perfumes and very interested in perfumes and when i walked in the room and i was some several feet away from her she sort of screwed up her face and said you smell really cologne -y. and i had her smell both and she didn't like either the clone or office for men and she also agreed that both uh, were not that similar so I feel like Alexandria had, didn't really clone it that well in my opinion and I also feel like what well, I'm just going to say it why clone a turd that that's going to really sum up how I feel um, so that was a big thing in the fragrance community because this was the first time a, U a big YouTuber was bringing out their own perfume and their own brand. So that caused a lot of stir and a lot of, you had the the fragrance army who were all very supportive, supportive of Jeremy and you had the, the haters and then people in the middle that were just not impressed by the marketing or the price point. So that was very interesting. And since then, of course, he's, um, Jeremy's now releasing Date for Men. So I'm not really sure how that would go on a date when you're, uh, the person you're dating says, you smell nice, what are you wearing? And you say, Date for Men. They're gonna think, oh, he's got imagination. <laughs> I think I'm gonna date him again. I think it should be called First Dates. First. <laughs> First date only, no further date. I'm I'm talking shit. Right, so that was that was Jeremy Fragrances brand, and I'm not hating or I'm am I I'm not hating on him. I really not. I do wish him luck with what he's doing, but I wish that he would take on board some of the criticism and bring the price point down to something that's acceptable for the quality of the product if there's still a profit margin at that point. 
talking about Jeremy Common, I'm just going to say this now. I'm jumping, I'm leaping, I'm leaping ahead in time now. Um, so Jeremy's just recently done a video on his top 10 most complimented fragrance reviewers. And what he's done is he's talked about 10 fragrance reviewers and he's kind of critiqued them. So he hasn't really, he didn't go too much into why he thinks they're good. The ones that he didn't have anything negative to say, he also didn't articulate why why they were good. So, and the thing that I most noticed, apart from the severe backhanded compliments, so basically he said George from Fragrance Apprentice doesn't get women, or he assumes he doesn't get women, and he assumes he doesn't go out much. That's the one that stood out to me the most, but uh, he said that, he said that Cascade Scents wasn't very bold. I think he was trying to say he's bland, but he didn't use that word, but he, he wasn't particularly good at articulating actually uh, very much about any of them except these backhanded compliments of saying that they're good, but then kind of concentrating more on saying why they're not good. So. But what I'm getting at here, because I'm rambling, what I'm getting at here is every single one of them was a man. And I can't believe that this is coming up again. Fragrance community is a bit misogynist in some ways. There are some fragrance reviewers who are men who only will talk about other men in when they do talk about other reviewers and I would just love to see and I don't think that every every man in Fragcom is a misogynist but clearly there's a few and I would just love to see the guys lifting up the ladies because we don't get as many followers as the chaps and it's uh, it's just a fact and I've explored that in a previous video, which you can go and find. I'm going to link a couple of my videos, actually, because I've just done a really awesome collaboration with a load of wonderful ladies. And uh, that's all about winter fragrances, sexy winter fragrances for men and women. And there you will discover an array of lovely ladies with very diverse tastes in fragrances. There's those that love the more mainstream, those that are very niche, everywhere in between, different styles of reviewing and talking. I'm sure there is someone new there to discover for you. So do click on that video and have a look. It's quite long, so like this one will be, you'll need to sit down and have a drink and maybe even some popcorn or something. But I do, if I say so myself, it's a pretty cool video. And thanks to Dan, Mr. Smelly for editing that one together for me because my skills don't lie in editing videos. So I have kind of gone off, I've gone off on a tangent. So let's bring it back. So after Paris, the next sort of notable thing for me in my frag calendar was Milan. I went to Essence in Milan and that was early spring. I've forgotten now if it was April. I think it was some sort of late April, early May. And that was amazing. I've never been to a perfume exhibition before. I got to smell an absolute ton of fragrances. I got to meet some fabulous people. Um, so where to even start? I did do a video on it, so it's pro I'll link that one if I can remember. I will link that one below as well. Uh, I got to meet Max Forty, who was so charming and so lovely in real life. Uh, Glenn, who is um, the Cologne guy, Cologne, Mr. Cologne 76. Glenn, the big, big, tall fella Glenn. I got to meet Joe sent me and I, I did meet Jeremy very briefly. He was perfectly charming, very kind in real life and very up for spending time with the other fragrance reviewers. I made a really good connection, a really positive connection with a perfumer. And I'm actually gonna come back to that because that's what my announcement is all about at the end of this video but I did make a really good connection. So I think if you are sort of immersing yourself into the fragrance community, then it's such a great place to go. I met Yana from the channel Tom Elise and her boyfriend is lovely. Ben is absolutely lovely, really sweet. 
and I've, I've probably forgotten so many people that I met but it was really really cool I had a fabulous time there was a little bit and I have to say this there was a little bit of uh with the youtubers there were mostly guys and there wasn't many of the girls and they kind of forgot about me I didn't get invited to a few things and I think that's just where the guys are just being guys but once again it is it, it does kind of highlight that the ladies the ladies just don't always get thought about or considered in our community and that's it's a little bit sad but I really hope that you know we can all address this if we're all on board with this we can pick this up just because we don't necessarily do top 10 lists that include uh, Armani Co Profumo and we don't talk about Aventus batch codes so it would just be lovely if some of the guys I know there's some really nice uh, fragrance reviewers I met loads of really nice fragrance reviewers it would just be nice if we all kind of really push the ladies and help them out a little bit. Just to, uh, there's some really great female reviewers out there. Emmy Ever After, I think she's really excellent. Great, diverse range of perfumes. She's lovely to watch because she's car she's very calming and soothing, but she knows her stuff. She has fabulous taste. So that's just one example. I'm not going to go into it anymore because that's I've said enough. But following Essence, uh, one thing that did happen was there was an article on Safle Bon where basically it was, uh, I don't want to, I'm obviously doing this from memory, so I'm not quoting the article here, but the, the gist of it was that the YouTube reviewers were mostly rude and kind of cut the, they were cutting off the space they took up too much space and therefore the bloggers the writers were not able to get to their appointments on time and it was kind of it was like saying all oh, you all the youtube reviewers were rude and we don't want them there and we hope that they become a thing of the past except for sebastian because he writes for us so it was like Sebastian from Looking, Feeling, Smelling Great. And they kind of said it, it wasn't about him, but it was about all the other reviewers. So I think it was a bit of a clumsy article and it got edited quite quickly. So the first one was much more scathing than the edited version. So I ended up doing a video on that because I felt slightly offended because I was not rude to anyone. And that's not my, that's not what I I don't think anyone would ever really call me rude. So I felt slightly offended that they tarred everybody with the same brush. If they had a personal experience with one person, I think maybe they either had the choice to name and shame or just keep quiet. But instead they tarred everyone with the same brush. So I didn't really like that. And I ended up doing a video on that vloggers versus bloggers. But of course, I don't see any reason why there needs to be uh, a divide between us we're all doing the same thing it's just a different format that was that and we all have our preferences I watch more videos than I read reviews simply because I can multitask I can listen to a video while I do something else and guess it's just a matter of, the, of a lack of time in my life that I just can't read every review because some of them are really long as well so that's that but I do enjoy I appreciate a well-written review and I understand that it does it takes a, a different level in, of of skill to write a review than it does to sit in front of a camera but I think you should also not dismiss the time and effort put into making videos and the bravery of putting your face out there and being able to talk like this is a skill in itself so that's my thoughts on vloggers v vloggers I think we're all awesome and let's just be nice to each other. So I'm going to talk about uh, my standout fragrances of the year now, my favourite fragrances that were released this year. Um, and one of them is Bengal Rouge. I purchased this bottle from uh, Papillon Perfumery Bengal Rouge. It's absolutely a standout fragrance. It's in lots of people's best releases of the year, uh, articles and videos and with good reason. It's a very, very opulent and rich ambery fragrance. It opens with a honey accord. There's tonka, it's very spicy. There's sandalwood, there's rose. It's cozy, it goes on forever. It has a fantastic development. 
a very, very well thought out and exceptional fragrance in my humble opinion. So that is one of my standout fragrances of the year. Another one is actually my scent of the night. So here we are Christmas night and I'm wearing SP Musk from SP Parfums. This was sent to me for review by Sven and I just fell in love. I wouldn't be including it in this video if I didn't love it and I have used all of that. So I think that tells you how much I love this fragrance. I've worn this to work several times and it's very popular with my colleagues. They all enjoy it. It's got an aged patchouli in it, which makes it kind of powdery and dry. It's sweet. There's acacia, which is also known as hawthorn. There's a hint of a uh, green notes. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit sweet. I don't know if I'd call it vanillic, but there's a sweetness in here, which I'm, is coming from, I think maybe the jasmine, but it's really, really rounded and smooth at the same time as having this dry, almost sawdust like texture from the aged patchouli. It is something else. It's really special in my humble opinion. So that's one of the standout fragrances of the year for me. And then the other one I didn't bring downstairs and that one in for the best designer fragrance of the year. I'm, and I haven't smelled everything, of course, but my favorite is Mon Guerlain Eau de Parfum Intense. Love that, the the vanilla, there's like a salty vanilla accord that is absolutely stunning. It smells more like the vanillas in the Lart and Matier Guerlain line. It smells very high end and very special. It's getting a lot of love from the fragrance community and with without uh, with good reason because it is a really really nice fragrance it's a lavender and vanilla still like the original mongolan but there just seems to be something a little more special about the vanilla -y aspects of it and i really love it so another thing that happened this year is i got invited to lush liverpool so uh, liverpool opened the biggest lush store in the world and i was invited along to have a look around the store, experience the fragrance library. So they have a, a special corner in the store that's dedicated to books all about fragrance. I got to smell some of their exclusive perfumes that were only available in the Lush London store. It was a lot of fun. Lush do some really interesting fragrances. There's definitely some hits and misses. Some of them are just too weird for my taste. They do go a bit gothic. And a bit out there but some of them are actually really really nice lush use a huge amount of naturals they don't actually want to use synthetics if they can avoid it and that can that can be a good thing that can be a bad thing sometimes they can feel a little unblended and a little bit chunky but actually some of them are really really nice and you can see the ingredients on the back and you'll see oris butter vanilla they actually have really really expensive ingredients that are 100% in the bottle. They're not synthetic accords that most perfumes would have. They are natural and I think that's a bit special. So I thoroughly enjoyed my visit to Lush in Liverpool. Look, following that, I went on a little holiday on my own. I went to Devon, North Devon in the UK, was uh, lucky with the weather. Most of the time the weather was great. I had a really lovely time and I used the breakaway to smell some samples that I had. Uh, rather than going to my full bottles as I usually do these days, I sampled quite a lot of things on that uh, little holiday. One of one of which was Chez Noir by Bido Perfumes. And I'm going to come back to that, but I really enjoyed wearing that, even though it's not quite my style because it's kind of a green fragrance, has a very outdoorsy feel. It's based on a vineyard in the UK. So it's a really interesting, amazing crafted fragrance. And it was actually the winner of the Art and Olfaction Awards in the Artisan category. So it's an award winning fragrance. And I really enjoyed wearing that one when I was in Devon. And there is a video on that as well, but I probably won't remember to link it. Following that, I got invited along, along with Dan, Mr. Smelly, we were invited to the Galavant launch for their latest fragrance, which was Los Angeles. And I went along with Dan and we met the brand owner, Nick Stewart. 
and we smelt the fragrance, we learned about the ingredients, we got to smell some individual ingredients to understand the fragrance. So Los Angeles is, it's got ethyl maltol in it, which is the chemical that smells like candy floss. So it's, it's what's responsible for the sort of burnt sugar recording Baccarat Rouge. But the ethyl maltol is not at any level like Baccarat Rouge. So you can smell a hint of candy floss, but it's not full on. There's a smoky asphalt note. So they, they use guyac wood and some woods and smokes to get this kind of tar-ish, like road, hot road kind of smell in there. But it's again, it's kept quite light, so it doesn't make the fragrance challenging. It's tuberose is the main accord. And I wouldn't normally like a tuberose, but I actually really enjoy the fragrance. It's somewhere between fresh and not fresh. So it's quite, it's very versatile. I like how it's a mixture of, of quite a few things I like. So the sweetness of the ethyl maltol, the sort of woodsy smokiness, and the fact that it's a tuberose that I can actually wear because tuberose to me can come off very blousy and in your face. If To me, it always feels like an overdose of flowers, like a massive bunch of pungent flowers in your face, like being slapped around the face with a bunch of flowers. But in Los Angeles, it doesn't come across like that. So there's a tuberose that I can actually wear. So they gifted myself and Dan a bottle of that. And I've worn that. I think I took that took that on holiday. I think I took that on my last holiday. Another really interesting thing that happened was 4,160 Tuesdays did a fragrance called Clouds, Clouds and Clouds Illusion. And what they did is they decided to do, and it, it was a collaboration with Christy Long, who runs the fragrance group on Facebook, Oh My Soul. And Sarah McCartney, the perfumer, is also a moderator of that group. And they collaborated on a fragrance that is based on Joni Mitchell's song, Both Sides Now. And it's also based on Christie's own experience with uh, basically a, a broken heart and seeing both sides of, of love and how you can have the really sad and terrible side of it and the euphoric and the really happy side of love. But what's most interesting is that they decided to do two versions. So they did one where they put in very expensive naturals and they did the illusion version where they the most expensive of the naturals were replaced with synthetics. So the, there's Narcissus, there's Vanilla, there's Oris, and I think there's Hay Absolute. I'm not sure if that's one of the expensive ones or not. But what was really fantastic is that if you bought one bottle, you got a sample of the opposite version. So you could actually see for yourself whether the you prefer the natural or the synthetic version. And I love that. That was really interesting. And I still yet to properly do a side by side with the samples that I've got. But I've been wearing it. I bought the cheap bottles. I bought the Parfum Strength and the Eau de Parfum Strength. And I've got them here, actually. And I have been wearing both quite a lot. So that's the Parfum, the smaller bottle. And that one is the Eau de Parfum. They are different enough for me to happily be owning both. I probably prefer the Parfum just because it is richer and I feel more of the Oris in there. But these are the ones with the synthetic Oris, synthetic Narcissus, synthetic Vanilla. And they're both really, really good fragrances. But I love that. Sarah is highlighting that synthetics are not the enemy, I think, really, but giving everyone the opportunity to discover for themselves that synthetics aren't that bad. They're actually pretty damn good. And with synthetics, there's less chance, I think, as far as my understanding goes, much less chance of a reaction from a synthetic ingredient than a natural. I've already said best designer fragrance this year for me was Mont Galan Eau de Parfum Intense. But I also want to give a shout out to Yves Saint Laurent's Libra. I really enjoyed that one as well. Uh, another kind of, it's kind of musky orange blossom, really, and lavender as well. A really interesting fragrance. It stood out a little bit for me anyway from the pack. So a shout out to that. I don't recall smelling one men's designer fragrance that got me slightly excited even. So I'm not going to bother 
talking about that. Worst designer, I decided to go with Tiffany. I love Tiffany. I own a Tiffany ring. I'm not wearing it right now, but I love Tiffany jewellery. I love uh, the colour of their boxes and their marketing. And I would have loved Tiffany to have come out with something exciting when it comes to fragrances. Their previous releases, the recent previous releases, did not interest me whatsoever. Very, very fresh and generic. And then the ones they came out with this year, uh, just called Tiffany Love. Tiffany Love for men and Tiffany Love for women. Again, very, very generic and just not interesting to me whatsoever. So very disappointed. I wish Tiffany would be a little bit bolder and come out with something a little bit more interesting. I'm going to talk a little bit about my own channel, my own growth uh, in terms of my YouTube channel. So I started doing live streams and I found them really, really enjoyable. And I feel like it's I don't know if it's growing my channel, but I feel like I'm getting a little bit more interaction from people and I think my subscriber base, my subscriber base is a very, uh, it's a very slow and organic thing. And I've been on YouTube for something like seven or eight years, although I didn't start out with fragrances. I started out more beauty, but I'm slowly organically growing and I feel like the live streams are bringing more people to me. And I also feel as a person that I'm growing this past year for me has been a little bit of a, I don't want to say spiritual journey because that's a bit fluffy, but I've learned a lot about myself in the last year. I've learned that I am, a, a, well, I knew I was a people pleaser. I knew that I hated confrontation, but I started to learn a bit more about psychology, watching a lot of psychological, psychological, watching a lot of psychology videos to understand myself more and and kind of I'm on a bit of a journey of self-love and self-discovery I've realized that I haven't been that kind to myself in the past and so I've also been sort of learning about law of attraction and positive thought and how we can get locked into our emotions but actually we can control our emotions because the, the emotions come from thoughts and you can choose what you think so I'm kind of on that journey of discovery and the upshot is I am being more authentically me this year than I ever have been because I was always trying to dull myself down to please more people. I want I wanted everyone to like me and I've realised that it doesn't matter what you do. Some people will like you and some people won't just like I'm going to like some people and I'm not going to like others and what's what's better is that people are just themselves and you can choose who you like and who you don't like so i am very much becoming more me than i ever have been in my life and i'm trying to share that with with you out there because i think that from personal experience the most authentic fragrance reviewers are the ones i enjoy the most even if they can sometimes be negative or insulting I can look past that and at least appreciate the honesty and the transparency. And so I'm trying to be uh, my most authentic self. And if you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe or put a thumbs down on my video. You'll find that I'm not one of these YouTubers that's trying to desperately grow because that's not my goal in life to have a big YouTube channel. Uh, career that's ne that's never going to happen I'm not I'm not willing to compromise myself to get there and the only way I see we can get there from what I can see out there is by doing the top 10 lists all the time and by putting out a lot of content and I don't want to put out content unless I actually feel like I want to talk about something. So I don't want to feel the pressure to put five videos out a week because then you're just going to have me talking absolute fucking drivel. And well, I, mean, I mean, I'm doing that anyway, but it's going to get worse if I did something like that. So you are going to see very authentic me and hopefully the the more I am on my own spiritual journey, as we want to call it that, then hopefully the the channel will improve in that respect. And hopefully I'll, I'll keep on growing organically and my aims in life. I think I would love to be 
involved career-wise in the fragrance community in some way or in with fragrances but not to the detriment of my enjoying fragrances so i'm basically open to where this could lead so are youtubers doing their own fragrances so we spoke about jeremy but also uh, you have you have oswald he's released his own fragrances i'm not sure if they're available to the uk i don't know too much about those you also have uh, Dan from Mr. Smelly's got Gravitas that he has, uh, he's done the crowdfunding on and I think he's going to be shipping that one in February if everything is on track. So Gravitas for men and you have Peter from Fragrance View. Peter, I think from, from my point of view, Peter is the one to watch. Peter has sunk his life savings into his brand. He's created the fragrances himself. He's created and designed every single aspect of his brand. Every minor detail has come from Peter's head. And if you watch his video about his brand launch, it's about half an hour long or so, but it's excellent. If you're interested in his fragrances, you should watch it. And I've ordered samples myself, so I will certainly be sharing those on my channel. So other YouTubers that have fragrances coming out is our uh, Stephen from Red Lessence, of course. Stephen has launched his brand Navitas, Navitas, and he's worked with a major perfumer. So Bertrand Duchafour is the one that uh, comes to mind straight away, and Christian Carbonell. And I'm really hoping to try those fragrances as well, but you know, I don't think samples were available. I think they are now. So I'll probably try and get hold of samples at some point in the future. But for now, I think I'm, I'm concentrating on uh, Peter's. He's the, he's the one I'm rooting for the most, if I'm honest, because he's put everything he's got. He's, he's taken a massive risk and therefore really, really hope that I like or even love one of his fragrances so that I can buy a full bottle and support him. And that leads me on to the next person that's got a fragrance coming out and that is me. <laughs> so I'm not going to go into too much detail yet but I, uh, I've been working with a perfumer. It was a very serendipitous meeting and we are at the stage of I've smelt a few mods of the perfume that she's created and there's one that I'm really loving that we're just going to see if we can tweak a little bit just to meet the brief. Uh, it smells beautiful as it is and I will happily wear that fragrance every day exactly as it is. But I, want, I, have, I have a brief in mind. I'm going to give you, I'm not going to give you the full brief just yet. I'm going to give you a hint. Uh, we're talking nostalgic childhood memories. We are talking a gourmand element so it's not I wouldn't say it's going to be a full on full on gourmand it's not a fragrance that's going to smell like a dessert uh, the fragrance is pretty much going to be me in a bottle now that sounds very narcissistic but what I am aiming to do here is I have a very loyal small following but a very loyal following of people and quite a few of you have very similar taste to me so it's really important for me to do a fragrance that I love that meets all my criteria in a good fragrance so that I can put my hand on my heart and tell you my viewers that this is a fragrance that I absolutely love. So the main elements of that is that it's a fragrance that has development. So it's so important to me that a fragrance is not linear. I don't like linear scents. I get very bored, especially if they are gourmand type fragrances. I don't want to walk around smelling like a dessert all day long. I like a, a, a moment of smelling like a dessert that then develops into other aspects. So that's a really important aspect to my fragrance is that it will have development and it won't be too sweet. So I like sweetness. I definitely, I'm on the spectrum of, of, of if you look at it like that, that being sweetest, that being not sweet at all. I'm about here, there, 
So I like sweetness, but I don't like cloyingly, sickeningly sweet fragrances. So this will have sweetness. It will have vanilla because I love vanilla. It definitely has got vanilla in it. I'm going to tell you one note. And one note is pear drop. My perfumer has created the most stunning pear drop accord that's in the top notes and she's managed to it's actually been a challenge for her and she's done a most fantastic job of making that pear note the pear note is the um, ingredient that she's got uh the pear itself is very volatile it's it's like a lemon or a lime volatile ness in that it disappears very very quickly and she's been working really hard and researching to try to get this pear drop accord to hang around and she's done an absolutely amazing job it clings it clings on to the other elements of the fragrance so whilst the openings are really bright and beautiful pear pear drop accord it actually clings on to the other more the heart and bass notes so that you get this Rem, you get this reminder of the top note, even though it's not as full on through the development of the fragrance, the uh, pear note actually does cling on and it is stunning. I, I've had several people smelling my mods that I've had and I'm getting a lot of friends and colleagues telling me they will definitely buy a bottle if it smells anything like that. So it's really, really crowd pleasing. Oh, it's not finished yet we're only in the development stages but it is happening and when it does i will be sure to let you know but i just wanted to to let you know that that's in the offing so of course i will let you know as and when we get to different stages but it will be coming out next year and i really hope that if you like your fragrances how i like my fragrances that you might consider giving it a try. So that is everything, I think. That's my year in review. I hope you enjoyed the video. I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas if you celebrate and a Happy New Year. Do, cat's down there, do leave in the comments. Let me know how's your year been? What are you hoping for the future? What was the highlights and lowlights of the um, general fragrance community for you? And what's been your Christmas scent of the day or scent of the night? So as I said earlier, mine is SP Musk. And I'm gonna do one more on camera because live action spraying. So. SP Musk, my scent of Christmas night. I now have to get ready for work. Night shifts, yay. I hope you all have a wonderful festive season and I will see you all in the next video.